I'm here in Israel. Uh, personally, I work with a few Israeli startup uh, companies. Uh, several of them are in the uh, fintech. Uh, so I have some also experience that is outside of uh, academia. I'm going to tell you about uh, one of those uh, startups today a little bit. But mainly I'm going to give you a little bit more of an academic perspective of how to think about fintech and where the innovation is going to come from. Um, I'm telling you something you probably know, there is, uh, if you look at the last uh, uh, five to seven years, there is a big ex explosion in terms of the interest of investors in fintech, whether we look at the number of startups that got financed uh, or the amount of money that has been going through it. This is just information from the US, uh, is what you see in the orange line and all together around the world. Uh, and you see a big significant interest from the Asian Pacific, over $22 billion just in 2015. Uh, that's a significant amount of, amount of money that uh, has been invested. Um, to show you another aspect of this interest, NASDAQ actually started an index on fintech. Now, if you dig a little bit deeper, you see that this index that NASDAQ called fintech is not exactly what you and I will call fintech. You have their MasterCard and American Express and uh, Equifax uh, probably didn't do so well lately. Uh, but the bottom line is that Investors are interested in this, uh, not only VC investors, but uh, this is an interest that also small investors uh, are showing a lot of interest in that. And it's not surprising if you look at the potential market, potential bar market is quite large. Uh, you see here a chart that breaks down just some of this market, whether it's wealth management that we see a lot of activities there personal finance, lending. Lending is a market of $872 billion. Do a simple math. Let's say that FinTech will just take 5% of this market. 5% of this market is roughly $45 billion. Let's say you're talking about a multiple, 10, 10 multiples of that, you're talking about startup with a value of $500 billion. Okay, and this is just if FinTech will take 5% of this market. You can start to see why the big banks, insurance company, for the first time ever, are actually knocking at Washington and Brussels doors and asking for more regulation. Not about themselves, of course, but about uh, the uh, fintech startups uh, that uh, are just feeling they're eating their lunch. Indeed, um, if you look at the McKinsey uh, assessment, McKinsey estimate that 10 to 40% of bank revenues could be at risk in eight years. Uh, Accenture is saying full service banks as a group could lose about 35% of their market share in three to four years. So fintech is here uh, and fintech seem to make a difference. The big difference of what we see with innovation now relative to other innovation in this arena before is that now the innovation is coming from outside. It's not Citigroup and it's not JP Morgan that is doing the inside innovation, but rather from the outside. And this is part of the reason why they have been worried about it and they're also going to embrace it. This is a very interesting chart. Uh, was done by one of my uh, colleagues uh, published in the American Economic Review. What is this chart is showing something that is fascinating. I don't know if all of you know, but if you look at the last 100 years, Profit of banks have skyrocketed. Okay, of course, they're up and down, but overall, they've skyrocketed. Now, what you see in this chart is not the profit of the banks, but actually the profit of the banks scaled by their assets. This chart is telling us that banks, in general, have not gained any efficiency of use their, of their assets in the last 100 years. Okay, maybe only the railroad in the U.S. will have the similar picture of no gaining efficiency. But altogether, this is very surprising, and this is why we have uh, the, all those who are interested in fintech and opportunity. A lot of money, significant profit, and no increase in efficiency. And that's also the reason why now fintech is coming to the picture. Why else will be now? Big breakthroughs in terms of technology. This is just one example. The example that you see here is the percent of respondents who would give money via mobile devices. Naturally, the millennium leading the way, but altogether you see a significant portion of population is now willing to embrace a new technology. Add to that the, te add to that the technology, improved technology in machine learning, artifi artificial intelligence, natural language processing, and you can start to see why the last five years have been real breaking point in terms of this type of innovation. Now, I've been 
teasing you before uh, at the beginning of the lecture a little bit about banks, but actually this chart is showing you the what is really happening with the banks in terms of the customers. Uh, if you see, uh, customers are now more willing to trust Google, and trusting Google is not a, a sort of an easy thing to do with their finance than a bank with 200 years of history. Okay, PayPal gets 73% rating relative to Wells Fargo or JP Morgan with around 40%. So basically this is saying banks don't have the unique aspect that they used to have, which is the trust of the people. In fact, in the same survey, they've already uh, also looked at what is happening to where banks are ranked relative to other industries, and they are at the very bottom. So what is really FinTech that we're all talking about? FinTech is the use of technology and analytics, uh, often through new business model to lower friction in financial markets. And the friction is the key words. Okay, because when you have to think about what technology will work, what startup will succeed, the friction to identify what friction it solves is really one of the key aspects. And I'm going to devote the next few minutes to talk a little bit about what type of frictions we're talking about. Okay, so let's look at the uh, first example. The first example is a Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage just last year issued more than $7 billion of uh, loans uh, one of the fintech startups in one year, seven billion dollars of loan. They just started two years ago, um, and the key to success is they cut the line. They cut the time to wait for customers by 12 days relative to what has been happening before. Okay, so that's the unit processing cost, basically lowering the cost. The first, fr the first friction that one must think about. The second one, which is equally important, is the issue of asymmetric information. What is asymmetric information? That the lender and the borrower don't have, for example, the same information. You have some of those startups that what they do, especially in the lending arena, that using machine learning, uh, using artificial intelligence, are able to get information about the customers in a way that enhances the borrower uh, to give loans at a much cheaper rate. Um, and there are many of them that this is really what they're trying to do. Equifax was trying to do it, uh, as we know, with mixed success. What is probably the biggest issue that investors are worried about uh, the financial institution? The problem of agency issues. Okay, whether you talk about the financial crisis uh, or other uh, um, events throughout uh, the 20th century, the issue is the fact that uh, Financial institutions don't always put the customers on top of their uh, totem pole in terms of who they worry about. And the fintech, here we're talking about the robo-advising, for example, whether it's Wealthfront or Betterment, that are offering the same product but in a transparent way and in a more rigorous way relative to what the other banks or Wells Fargo, whatever you want, will offer. You see exactly what you get. Everything is transparent, and the conflict of interest issue uh, is much reduced. That's another potential friction that, uh, um, that those fintech companies are solving. In fact, in the second part of today, we're going to see at least one startup that I would say what they're trying to do is exactly come with a product that reduces this agency conflict. Um, Search cost, probably the best example for search cost is going to be in insurance and the example that I have here actually health insurance. Let's put together a marketplace. Many of the fintech, what they do is put together a marketplace. Let's put together a marketplace that will put together those individuals or small businesses that seek insurance and put them together with the insurers and get to a, a equilibrium where the prices and the insurance premium are much lower. Uh, Oscar is one prime example for that, but not the only one. Um, another example, this is a startup that actually I'm involved with called T-Pranks. Um, that what it's doing, it's able to reduce both the agency pro problem, asymmetric information, and search costs. How does it do that? It scrapes the entire web from information, whether it's about analyst recommendation, uh, scrape the SEC website um, about what insiders are doing, and create from this ranking uh, that can help individual uh, to make decision, the same individual that maybe institution can do with 10 experts and Bloomberg terminal, 
Now individual can do it uh, simply by using that, enhancing the information, reducing processing costs. So for example, you can think about you have 3,000 analysts. Let's try to track and see which one of them perform better. And the output that you're going to see is individual um, on their website as a freemium is the ranking of those analysts. Uh, the next stage, which I think is pretty cool, is actually creating a new sentiment. Okay, so now let's say that we, we heard about Equifax. So let's look at the new sentiments on the day before. Uh, every day we're going to follow the new sentiment and create an index based on new sentiment. What you see in this chart is a strategy that is long in the positive new sentiment and short in the negative new sentiment uh, and strategy that uh, actually is enable investors, again, to invest their money in a better way. Uh, Latency, another friction, okay, that we can solve sort of with blockchain, uh, uh, some of the ICOs claim to do it. Basically, we can do all the transactions, the Australian Stock Exchange, for example, have adopted it to create a uh, a much faster settlement even for stocks. Okay, all this uh, friction, and here I only talked about the friction, uh, the next step is to take this friction and now to look at the verticals, okay, and to see which friction are applicable to each verticals. You can think about the verticals as marketplace lending, uh, you have, for example, uh, cabbage is one example, crowdfunding, wealth management, Crowdsourcing, that's a sort of a big issue that uh, is really seeking alpha, for example. Of course, with algo trading, transfer and payment, and so on, there are several of them which I will not have time to uh, go into. Altogether, fintech potential impact is huge. Um, that's why we're all excited about it, and that's why some of the big institutions also should uh, worry about it. Um, but this is one of the things that me as a professor, I get into it because I do think not only there is a potential for a substantial gain, but there is really substantial uh, possibility for making the world better. Thank you.